Hello all my dear students welcome back to Prudence Coaching as usual today also we came up with an important topic students in the previous video we have gone through the poem Amanda written by Robin Klein there we have learnt about the poem as well as the poet and also completed with the summary of the poem in this video we are going to start with the question answer but before that I will tell you a short note about the poem to make you understand better so let's start with the topic but if you haven't yet watched the previous video i will suggest you to watch that particular video before watching this particular video or after watching this video so let's start first we will learn about the poem the poem focuses on the upbringing of a small child whose name is Amanda. It focuses on the struggles that a child is facing. Poet Robin Klein makes the important point that children should never be deprived of their freedom. So in this particular poem mainly the poet Robin Klein has talked about or has focused on the upbringing of a small child whose name is Amanda. And here the poet has shown the struggles that the child is facing while her upbringing. Poet Robin Klein makes an important point here in this poem that the children must not be deprived of their freedom. That means each and every child should be given a freedom in his or her life. That is very important. So let's start with the question answer. First question, how old do you think Amanda is? How do you know this? answer Amanda is a young girl who is around 9 to 10 years old she is being rebuked by her parents with typical instruction that is quite common for the children of her age her parents are trying to inculcate good manners and etiquette in her for own good as she is naive and innocent next question who do you think is speaking to her? Answer. Amanda is being spoken by one of her parents. It is most likely that it is her mother. Generally speaking, a mother is the first teacher for a child. She always tries to guide and instruct her child to follow the righteous path. Hence, from the range of instructions given to Amanda, it exhibits that the speaker is her mother. Next question. Why are stanza 2, 4 and 6 given in the parenthesis or within the bracket? Stanzas 2, 4 and 6 are given in parenthesis because they exhibit the inner thought and reaction of Amanda as she receives instruction from her mother given in stanza 1, 3 and 5. As there is an alternate sequence of scolding by Amanda's mother, she gives a corresponding reaction to it on the following stanzas in parenthesis. Thus, the parenthesis is used by the poet to convey the friendly tone of the poem. Next question. Who is the speaker in stanzas 2, 4 and 6? Do you think the speaker is listening to the speaker in stanza 1, 3, 5 and 7? Answer. The speaker of the stanzas 2, 4, 6 is the child Amanda herself. No. She is not listening or paying heed to her mother's words in stanza 1, 3 and 5 as she is lost in her own dream world. Her imagination lets her escape from reality and she is lost in her own world. Let's start with question number 5. What could Amanda do if she were a mermaid? If Amanda were a mermaid, she could drift away slowly and carelessly on a languid Imoland sea. She wished if she could be the sole inhabitant of Green Sea. Sole inhabitant means only one. She will be only one person to be living in the Green Sea. 
and would slowly move on to eat. So if she were a single inhabitant of green sea, then she could slowly move on to the green sea. She longs for a place where she can be all by herself. She wants to be in a place where she is everything. No one is going to put any limitation on her and need not depend on anybody else for her happiness. And she need not to be dependent on anyone for her happiness. Amanda desired to be a mermaid because a mermaid symbolizes liberty. Liberty means there is no restriction free from anything and wonder means move anywhere without any thinking, without any limitation according to her. So according to her, mermaid symbolizes liberty that is freedom and wonder means move here and there without any restriction. Is Amanda an orphan? Orphan means a child whose none of the parents is alive. Why does she say so? Why she is saying that she is an orphan? No, Amanda is not an orphan. She says so because she wants to be on her own. She feels that she is being constantly nagged by her parents to follow their instructions. Being a little child, she seeks golden silence and a sweet freedom and wants to break all the norms. She wishes to roam around the street alone and draw dust pattern with her bare feet. She thinks if she were an orphan, she could do all of it without being nagged or rebuked by anyone and be all by herself. Next question. Do you know the story of Rapunzel? Why does she want to be Rapunzel? The story of Rapunzel revolves around her life on a high tower. She was locked in that tower by an evil witch. In due course of time, she got used to living there. She was very happy and content with her life in the tower. She had very long blonde hair which was used by the witch to climb the tall tower. One fine day, a prince came to meet her as he climbed the tower using her hair. When the witch came to know about it, she punished both of them by separating them. Finally, after many years, the couple united together forever. Similarly, Amanda wishes to live her own life like Rapunzel on a high tower on her own. Away from everyone, she yearns for freedom, peace and harmony. Due to this reason, Amanda wants to be like Rapunzel. However, she also states that since she doesn't want to be disturbed, she would never let her bright hair down from anyone to climb to her. She simply desires a happy and satisfied life with no disturbance from others. Next question, what does the girl yearn for? What does this poem tell you about Amanda? Amanda is a young girl who yearns for freedom and wants to be on her own. With constant scolding from her parents, she realizes that she is incapable of fulfilling their expectations. Generally, children of Amanda's age have similar feeling irrespective of class, color and nationality. Although we all know that traditional society always demand a well-mannered behavior from every person and the training of children by their parents play a significant role in molding their personality. Most parents train to ignore the innocence and understanding level of their children and the young mind faces tremendous pressure from their elders impacts their imaginative power and thoughts. Next question. Read the last stanza. Do you think Amanda is sulking and is moody? Answer. No, Amanda is neither sulking nor moody. She simply longs for her freedom as she is fed up of following the instruction given by her parents. She has a strong imaginative power and she visualizes herself to be the likes of Rapunzel's story and she wants to lead a carefree life free from all nagging and scolding from her parents. 
who are always trying to teach mannerisms and inculcate good habits in her. Next question. Write a short note on the title of the poem. The title of the poem is Amanda as it revolves around the upbringing of the little girl named Amanda. Her life is full of struggles where she is denied freedom and expressions. Amanda is so much irritated that she escapes the reality by living in her imaginative world. Through this, this gateway, she experiences calmness away from her nagging parents. Next question. Extract based question. So here you are given an extract. Based on that, questions are being asked. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. So this is the thing which is given or this is the extract which is being given from the poem. Here the first question is Amanda is getting instruction for what purpose? Amanda is getting instruction as a part of her upbringing. Her conduct and manners are getting refined for the future purposes. Give a synonym of hunch. Hunch means what? To bend. Does what does the speaker of the above lines instruct Amanda in the first stanza? So here in this stanza, Amanda is getting instructed for biting her nails and sitting lazily with her shoulders bent. What is the literary device used in the third line? Literary device used in the third line is alliteration. Means to stop that slouching and sit up straight. Next question. There is a language in our land sea, where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. Why does this lines given within the brackets? Answer. These lines are given within brackets because they reveal the inner thoughts of Amanda. Brackets are used for visual contrast between what Amanda is saying and what her mother is instructing. Next question. Give the word from the passage which means free flowing act of going with the motion and force. Drifting means free flowing act of going with the motion. What is the role of mermaid here? Mermaid is a part of Amanda's fantasy in her own created world. As mermaid sails in sea carelessly and effortlessly, similarly Amanda longs or wants to do so in a place where she is all by herself. Means no one is there to give any instruction or ask her not to do anything in that place or like that she wants to be in a place. Which word in the extract means opposite of sorrowful? Answer. Blissfully is the opposite of sorrowful. Next question. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda? Will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda? Question number one. Why is Amanda not looking at this speaker? Amanda is lost in her own thoughts and paying no attention to the instructions being given to her. That is why she, that is, why she is not looking at the speaker. Next question. Find the word in the extract which means same as consume. Eat means same as consume. To consume means to eat. Next question. The speaker is so worried about acne. What does it so? The speaker being worried about acne shows how much importance is given to physical beauty in a household. Amanda is prepared for the unforeseen future. Natu natural experience such as acne is also taken care of at any cost. Next question. Which word in the extract means same as to gaze? Answer. To gaze means what? To look. To look means same as to gaze. Next question. I am an orphan roaming the street. A pattern of dust with my head bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. How come silence is golden? Answer. Silence is sown golden using the poetic device metaphor. 
By making silence golden, the poet is estimating the worth of silence. For Amanda, six peace and calmness, which is absent in her reality. Give the synonym of roaming means you need to write a meaning of roaming. Roaming means wandering means moving here and there. Next we have what is Amanda up to in the stanza? Amanda is again taking refuse in her imagination. Here she wishes to be an orphan away from her nagging parents. Amanda wants to roam aimlessly in streets and draw patterns using her bare feet. Next question. What poetic device is used in this stanza? The poet uses metaphors such as orphan, silence is golden and freedom is sweet in this particular stanza. Next question. Number 5. I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. Does Amanda live on a tower? Answer. No. Amanda stays at her place. Here she is imagining herself to be Rapunzel who lived on a tower. At her own place means at her own home or house. Next question. Why will Amanda not let down her bright hair? Amanda is aware about the story of Rapunzel. In the story of Rapunzel, all the mishappening and misfortunes are brought to her by letting down her hair. Amanda also wishes to live alone, act carefree, without any disturbance. Next question. What is underlining poetic device used in this stanza? Poet uses allusion here as the underlining poetic device. Next question. Find from the passage a word which means same as serene. The word is tranquil. Next question. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Is Amanda really sulking? Amanda is not sulking. She just doesn't care about the instruction given to her as she is lost in the world of her own. Next question. Why does speaker care for others? The whole poem revolves around the aspect that how one is presented in a society. Speaker doesn't wish to be regarded as a nagging parent in this society. So Amanda is expected to put up a happy face all the time. Next question. Give the word from the passage which means same as unstable. Means you need to write the synonym or same meaning as unstable. Unstable here means moody. Moody means same as unstable. Next what poetic device has been used in the first line of this stanza? Alliteration has been used in the first line. Words strap and sulking start with the same sound. So it is alliteration which is used here. So my dear students with this we come to the end of this particular video. If you find the content of this video helpful don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And my dear students, if you want to communicate directly with the expert faculties of this particular channel, join our telegram group, the link of which will be given in the description.